interview with DJ Vibes, January 2004. How did you get into the scene? The scene? Oh, that's a seriously old style question. Um, I've never been Big Baz, uh, about, about, I'd say, 92, 91, 92. I used to know some old bloke called Jim from Basildon in Essex and he used to make radio transmitters. For some stupid reason, we decided, well, we'd like to have a bit of a radio. It's just for, I don't know where it came from, but I know at the time, <coughs> it was going to do us 300 quid, he could get us on out, a couple of miles, all we needed was buy some decks, bought some decks from Tandy. We didn't have a clue about mixing anything, um, no belt, no, just belt drives, no pitch control, and we could walk the transmitter off him and just threw ourselves straight into it. We didn't know about mixing, we used to buy records out the pound, no play, no return box in, um, in Grays, and just played them over around. Eventually, all of us, because it was so sort of original and around sort of where we lived at the time, around Tilbury, Grays, and Essex, it started building up. And the phone, we'd managed to get ourselves a real crappy old transportable brick mobile phone. And the phone was ringing all the time, and that led to a couple of bookings at the local youth clubs and just local little clubs and that. We used to ring them up and say we were on there, and it, you know, we just silly little things it built from and then obviously we sort of worked out that you could make two records go together eventually but with a lot of effort with these and then we managed to get some um, some um, decks with pitch control there was only this old sound lab I think they were, no I don't even, I can't even remember but that was basically the start and that's when the rave scene sort of got a bit and then I was playing soul on it to start with I was playing soul music and just all sort of jazz funk and that and then obviously the rave music came in slowly that was me, indeed, indeed. What's the best venue or night you've ever played at? That's really impossible because I've played, it depends what mood, the, it depends what mood the ravers are in that about, it depends what, you know, just, if you go to a club one night, you're not in a great mood, something happens to you or you, something's just not quite right, it can be a great night for everyone else but maybe not for yourself. You know, I've been to raves with 10, 15,000 people and it's been maybe a bit of hard work and a bit of aggravation with people in there. So, you know, there's been trouble or there's been stress with certain things in my day and not everything. But I've been to clubs with 200 people that have been jammed out going crazy. So there's no way I can gauge the best night particularly. Or I, I hope to talk about the rave scene because I've had some good nights <laughs> over Christmas. Any regrets from your years in the scene? Oh, I'm sure I couldn't. But everyone's got regrets about even their last night in the scene. But, um, I don't think I could really. I've had 10, 12 years of travelling around lovely places, getting paid sort of half respectable amount of money, getting a few free beers along the way, meeting amazing people. Being, well, the main, I think the main thing is the places I've been to. But regrets. Probably a couple of last tunes or a couple of in betweeners that I didn't really, you know, get away with. But no real regrets. Obviously, everyone would do something different if they had the chance to rewind it. But, um, Maybe, maybe, maybe to try, maybe obviously every DJ can become complacent if they get, think that they're doing well at the time and they just, they, it's very easy, you know, if you halfway made it, you club down a lot of clubs and just not even have to try anymore. Because when you start, you're desperate, you're hungry, you're sending tapes all the time. I suppose when you do get there a bit, you do let it go a bit as such, you do think, oh, this is okay, it'll carry on forever. But nothing carries on forever, so. Maybe, no, no regrets, maybe people say, why haven't you changed your music from hardcore across to something different, and, but like, that is me, I'm hardcore, I always have been. Maybe in a couple of years or a year from now, I can, I'm 32 now, I started when I was sort of 20, so I reckon probably in about a couple of years it might be time for me to mellow it out a bit and move across the board somewhere, so no, no regrets at all, not, not as yet. So what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't in the scene? No, that's in a well. That is, oh, 12 years of, 12 years of, I'd have worn out a few shovels and brooms by now probably, definitely. I might even be holding on to bars looking out as my mum walked away and said, why did you do it Shane? But um, other than that, I really don't know. I'd have done something else crazy, but I don't know if I'd have been um, lucky to be sitting here now as I am. What do you make of the hardcore scene today? completely different scene isn't it compared to the hardcore scene then it's just like the jungle scene now it's completely different to the jungle scene then it seems to be a lot more um, technic technologically advanced everything has to be so perfect whereas then it was rough and ready and everyone was just up for it straight off now it seems to be has to be it seems more a posy scene now as such whereas hardcore, the hardcore scene is the hardcore scene so it's just it's every, everything's moved on if you don't move on you die I think and it's moved on progressed really well I think definitely what CD is in your car at the moment? 
I, 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 I will actually believe it or not there isn't a CD in my car right now because I'm, I, this is a real, real crazy thing to say I'm a radio man as you can see in my car I have not, don't listen to CDs I listen to talk radio or radio 5 at home the CDs I've got I should well, I could fill you in on but I'm a radio man in the car I don't listen to music in the car hardly ever because driving around all the time you can hear the same tunes over and over again it gets boring I like to listen to me football and the current affairs but the CDs I've got in there right now I couldn't really explain to you. I couldn't really explain in a short time. There's a couple of weird ones. I actually got a bit country and western, actually, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, I'd like to release myself sometimes, <laughs> definitely. I've got some really old, old stuff, some old drummer bass stuff, and some old, um, got some old rare groove. I've got, I've got a mellow master cuts actually in, in, my, in my stereo right now indoors. But other than that, I'm not really a music man full time. Can't have it all the time, can you? What can we expect to see from Vibes in the next year? I'm going to push myself a bit harder this month, you know, as I said, things fall into your lap so easily, sometimes you just sit there and wait. If you don't sometimes go out and look for them, then they don't always come. There's a lot less music, uh, a lot less clubs to be played at now, and obviously I want to play as many clubs as I possibly can in as many crazy, strange areas around the country, around the world, in front of as many crazy, strange people as I can. So I'm going to push myself to different places. I'm going to sort of get on people's case more, more than them just falling in my lap. I'm going to try and get some different old school stuff. I want to try and play some different old school sets as well. Have you played abroad recently? And if so, what are the scenes like elsewhere? Well, I don't know. Um, yes, abroad, abroad, abroad. Yes, uh, Germany a couple of weeks ago, as um, all your firm will know, and Jason especially. It's just the same as usual. They, they love the old breakbeats, got breakbeat stuff, the old style, I'd say around the 95, 6 kind of impacty stuff, the asylum stuff, you know, that sort of. Oh, more breakbeat with some nice. They like the more kind of sampley vocals. I've done, done a crazy place in Spain a few weeks previous to that, which was more kind of trancey techno style. Right? More kind of trancey techno style, but every. S it's difficult to say. I've done Australia in the summer just gone as well, plus Ibiza, and, but it's what you want to play. If you want to give them to. You've got to go in and test the waters, but mainly they're a, a small bit behind. I don't like the really hard stuff at the board, as far as I know, the 170 BPMs. I prefer to keep it flat, cool, flat, take it easy, don't don't risk like everything in life, just go with what you know, as such, you know. Yeah, going abroad's great, but you can't beat the old central London labyrinth, sweaty six o'clock, falling out the front door, getting run over by a taxi, you can't beat that. <laughs> um, what did you do New Year, or shouldn't we ask? <laughs> new Year, New Year. Well, um... The New Year's Eve itself, or over the whole time. Well, the whole time was a bit crazy, actually. I've done some um, mad northern venues, some New Year's Eve, the best, well, Moon Darts, I've got to say Moon Darts was really good, great. I've done the 11 till, 11 till 12, well, I made sure I've done 11 till 5 past 12, actually. That was the best, that was the best thing. Um, I don't think you've got enough film, and I don't think um, the 18 plus is on your video website yet for me to reveal the full New Year's Eve. But on our, when, and when we have our um, Triple X interview in a couple of weeks, then I shall reveal all. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been an absolute.